morning. Good nice morning. to see you. Good morning. We're a minute late kicking in this oh, morning. Shame One on, minute. Shame on you. Shame on you. Nice to see everybody. <sighs> Happy weekend. So hopefully you're picking us up okay. We have a few issues with um, my computer last week. Yes, your computer has is away to the hospital to get fixed. So hopefully we're getting connected on here. Can you tell? I know. See well, it has. Oh, up? there we are now. Yeah, I have Great. to wait for a wee minute Good for to it to come you. up. But there's Stevie Morgan straight in. Good, Good to, to see you, Stevie. You're very, welcome. You're very welcome. Do let us know if there's any issues with that sound or visual. So this is what happened last week. I'll tell them the story. Oh yes, tell them um, the story. So yes. just before we did the little like morning chat, the bulb went above my head. So as soon as it was over, I thought I'll fix it. So I climbed up. And as I was taking the bulb out, it fell out of my hand, came down, hit the screen on my MacBook, and smashed the screen. What a tube. <sighs> so, yeah, so we were disappointed by that. Accidents happen, but... It does. It's in the Apple shop. It's getting, in the Apple shop getting, getting, getting so themselves sorted. So we're using sorted. them out this So we've got mine instead. So, so hopefully the stream will be fine. If there's any issues and it's glitchy, we'll we'll repost later on. But yeah, I think we're all good. we'll try our best. Well, good. So happy Monday. Say hello to a few people there who have got Penny. Good morning, and Nicola, and Ricky, and Glynis, and Stephen. Good morning, Darren and Jeanette. Good to see you all. Nice to see you. Mm-hmm. You're very welcome. So it's um, it's been a, a an interesting weekend for football for you. It has. Oh, well, I wasn't going to bring it up, but hey, since you did, <laughs> <laughs> how did Chelsea do? Gareth, well, let's not talk about Chelsea. Gareth Bale is back. Well, he's back. He's coming back. But without him, we still managed to win 5-1. And Son, who happened to be the captain on my dream team, scored four goals. So many points did he get? How many points did he get? Oh, he got me 44 points. 44. All by himself. So So it's all been good. My whole team didn't get 44 (laughs) points this weekend. I don't think you've had 44 points yet. I did. I got 50-something last week. (laughs) <laughs> anyway not that we're competitive in any way um, some people are probably getting lost in their convo sorry now. sorry but right, uh, Spurs won and Chelsea didn't so that's all you need to know yeah so it's good to see you all this morning <laughs> uh, this is a good place <laughs> yeah. this is a good place you have to like lay down your burdens if you're coming in this morning and you're connecting in and you're feeling weary I'm praying that by the time you finish this, you're uh, you're gonna leave that burden down. You're gonna feel that worry, weariness just lift off you. I'm praying that God will encourage you and speak to you this morning that um, you can come out of this with that uh, with joy and peace, and you can take the kingdom of God and sow it everywhere you you find yourself today. So Amen. We're speaking faith over fear and. Um, just lay the burdens down. Lay, lay them at the feet of Jesus. This is going to be a good day. Why? Because it's a day that the Lord has made. Yes. So let me pray. Mm-hmm. And then Amanda's going to kick us off today. So good to see everyone connecting in. You're very welcome. Thank you, Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And forget not all of his benefits. Thank you, Lord. We bless you this morning. We think of the benefits we have of being... Mm your children what it must be like to walk today in the darkness to walk today without hope without a future uh, what it must be like today to live in an environment where you are uncertain of where life will lead you uncertain of uh, where you will go in the eternity thank you lord for all the benefits we have of the cross that today lord i can sit with my wife in confidence mm-hmm. that you are watching over me that you love me that you have plans to bless me and not to harm me mm-hmm. thank you father god for all the work of the cross that forgives yeah. me that i don't uh, sense the wit of uh, shame and guilt Uh, I am not under oppression today. I am free and I'm free to live and I live in that liberty that you have given me from the cross. Thank you, Jesus, for your uh, death and resurrection, Mm -hmm. that they bring healing, that they bring wholeness, a hope and a future. I just receive afresh today all of the blessings, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord, and we forget not all your benefits. Mm -hmm. The Lord, we pray you'd speak to us today. Encourage us as Amanda takes us on an adventure through history and a significant revival. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Revival is the theme. Revival is the theme for the week. Bring Bring it on. on. (laughs) Bring it on. (laughs) Bring it on. Bring it on. So this morning, I'm going to be um, just delving back into history, as Mitch says, and thinking about the revival in the Hebrides. 
which was around the 1949 to 1952 mark um, and the well-known Duncan Campbell was this the preacher at the time so just been reading a little bit about it and just have a few things that I wanted to highlight before we kind of delved into a scripture that was linked um, at that time. So um, basically the revival started when there was seven men and two women decided to get together and just pray fervently for revival and they met in this barn together and at one of those meetings this one of the young men um, decided to read out a few verses from Psalm 24 which I'm going to look at in a bit more detail and the verses that he read out um, were verses 3 three and four and it says this who may ascend the mountain of the lord who may stand in his holy place the one who has clean hands and a pure heart Mm -hmm. and then he said this after reading this out to the group he said it seems to me just so just so sentimental humbug to be praying as we are praying to be waiting as we're waiting here if we ourselves are not rightly related to god and it was this link to the holiness of god that they realized that we need to have pure hands and a pure heart we need to be bring holy hearts before God before we can ever experience anything that God has and so he prayed that night and he asked God to reveal to him personally did he have clean hands and a holy heart and it was in the midst of that that God met with those people in that barn in such a powerful way as they waited in God. Duncan Campbell in his book The Price and Power of Revival says this He said, um, as they waited on God, his awesome presence swept the barn. Can you just imagine being in a room where God's awesome presence just sweeps through? You can just imagine like as Mm. it moves from one, as he moves from Mm. one side of the room to the other and touches people's lives. Just you can start to imagine what you could would experience and what you would feel. And this was um, said to be the the beginning of the stages of revival in that town. Um, He also goes on to say, Three men were lying on the straw, having fallen under the power of God. They were lifted out of the ordinary and into extraordinary. They knew God had visited them and they knew that neither their parish nor they could ever be the same again. Again, Mm -hmm. I imagine having such a a powerful presence of God in your in your life an experience of him that leaves you without doubt that you will never, ever be the same again, that compels you into a new place, into a new way of living, into a new way of being and thinking like a complete transformation. And then like four miles away, there's these two older sisters, these older ladies who are like 82 and 84, who are also praying for revival. Oh, was that right? And they had this picture, this vision from God of all of these churches completely crammed, packed tight, young people flocking into church. And they and, and, and the words that they said was that they had this glorious assurance that God was coming in revival power. And then Duncan Campbell was invited to speak at the churches. And so he travels to the Outer Hebrides, which I'm sure was no mean feat in those days. No, getting well, there. A, bit of, a bit of the backstory for that is fascinating because the two ladies had sent an invitation to Duncan Campbell yeah. to come and speak. And he declined. And they said to their minister, keep praying and keep preparing. He's going to come. So they put posters and everything up to say that Duncan Campbell <laughs> was coming when he had declined the invitation. Duncan Campbell declined because he was speaking at Hamilton Road Presbyterian and Bangor at the Bangor Conven- Convention at Easter. And he preached his, he was there for the whole week and he preached his first sermon on the Sunday morning or the Monday morning. And he was shaking and he said at the end, I'm very sorry, I have to go. And they said, you're here for the whole week. And he said, I'm really sorry, I have to go. And he felt compelled to go to this island, which had a population of 400. He had 400 people in front of him <laughs> in Bangor. Wow. And he left the Bangor Convention to go to the Hebrides. That's brilliant, and do, you know who, do you know who was in the congregation that morning as a young boy? Hey. And remembers it to this day? Pastor McConnell. Oh, brilliant. Pastor McConnell was in... Hamilton Road, the day that Duncan Campbell preached and said, I have to leave, and he went to the Hebrides and revival started. I bet you wish you had went with him. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> well, I don't know. I think a, I think a bastard done well, okay here. I think here, he, didn't he? Right. I think a bastard he did all done right. A good job. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Duncan Campbell tells the story that whenever he turned up to speak at this church, it was already packed to the rafters, and that people had come from all over. That people were actually going. I don't even know who you have these people. You can imagine a, a wee yeah. island of four hundred. Everybody knows everybody, <laughs> and yet there he was turned up at this church with this masses of people, people who they didn't even know where they came from. Um, and he said, like within ten minutes of the church service starting there was just this weeping sound this sound of people crying out this sound I suppose like a sound Sound. of revival you know this sound of weeping and he says it was from that moment on that God just moved in power that that as the people wept they they realized that they were meeting with the holy God and in that moment a holy God met with his Mm. people Uh, it just like even just talking about it just gives me goosebumps I'm just like oh do it again Lord do it again and so this morning as we just reflect on that I just thought we'd take a couple of minutes to really reflect on Psalm 24 for ourselves and think about where we're at and where our hearts are Um, and what really strikes me about Psalm 24 um, I mean it's only a short psalm but it starts off and the earth is the Lord's and everything in it the world and all who live in it for he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters so right at the very start of this psalm we're reminded that God is mighty God he is a mighty creator and that everything and everyone and all of the earth belongs to him and then at the very end of the psalm um, in the last sort of three or four verses five times it uses this phrase the king of glory it says who is this king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle and then it says who is this king of glory the lord almighty he is the king of glory and so we're sandwiched between these two revelations of creator god and mighty king and in the middle of it the psalmist asks this question who may ascend the mountain of the lord who may stand in his holy place Mm. and so who who of any of us is in a position where we get to come into the presence of the creator of the universe, oh the my. king of kings and the Lord of lords? And, and the psalmist answers it. He says, it's the one who has clean hands oh, and a pure heart, who is not trusted in idols. And when he says that, there's, there's almost a moment of disappointment because it's like... Oh, whack. I don't that, qualify. That's not me. <laughs> I'm out. It's not me. I'm out. No one meets the standard that, that no one has the right. And, and that's the reality of it, that God is God. And I think sometimes in our um in our culture that we that we flippantly just always see God the Father, who's this loving God, and we can climb into his arms. But actually, God is God. He is holy and he is righteous. That he is mighty and he is creator and he is king of kings. And his standard is way beyond anything that we will ever be able to meet. And no one is able to stand in his presence. No one is able to come in because of his holiness. But yet... God made a way where there seemed to be no way. He made a way in and through Jesus. And so this requirement of purity in our actions, our pure and clean hands and purity in our heart, um, not only does it give us this healthy perspective of how far we are from God, but it also lets us see the great work that Jesus did in mm. reconciling us to God. And so when Jesus came, he was the only one who oh met my. that standard. Oh he my. was the only one who could say that he had clean hands and a pure heart. Romans chapter 3 and verse 22 says this righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe and that's who we are this morning that we this morning as the righteousness of God Mm -hmm. get to come into his presence that we have that privilege where we can ascend his mountain because of what Jesus is because we are hidden in Christ. Spurgeon says our Lord Jesus Christ could ascend into the hill of the Lord because his hands were clean and his heart was pure and if we by faith in him are conformed to his image we too shall enter but then it's also a reminder like first john 1 and verse 6 says if we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness we lie and do not live out this truth and so actually it's not just about resting in the righteousness of christ but actually living in a righteous way that demonstrates that we have clean hands and a pure heart that everything that christ has done has brought us to this um, Mm. response of obedience Mm. and so we live in a way that demonstrates holy um 
holy, a holy heart, clean hands and a pure heart. And so this process is an ongoing one of where we come before God every day and we cry out because we understand that we are far from him, but that in Jesus we can come near and we can we can experience that mm. nearness that Jesus does in the Father. So love that. That's good. There we go. Thanks so much, Amanda. We'll uh, we'll we'll take a lot of that to reflect on today. You know, watch it again. You know, um, share it with with others. Um, here's the one thing, Amanda. That maybe when you're reading, you you picked up the answer to it. But when Duncan Campbell started the the preaching, ten minutes into it, there was that sound of weeping. What were they weeping for? Uh, Psalm 126 verse 5 says this, Those who sow in tears will reap with shouts of joy. Those mm-hmm. who sow with tears shall reap with shouts of joy. Um, and I just, you know, I, I, you know, what do we need to do? What does our hearts need to weep today? But what do they need to weep for? I'm going to mm-hmm. suggest that they need to weep for three things. We need to weep for ourselves. Um because of our sinfulness and in a, in a sense of repentance and truly turning away to be more like Jesus. I think we need to weep for the church, mm-hmm. that the church isn't where God wants it to be, perhaps. Um, that it's not, um, well, you, you can fill in the blanks there. And I think we need to weep for the lost, and weep yeah. for our community. You know, we have... I need to double check a figure, but I, someone told me um, on Saturday that there has been 40 suicides in Northern Ireland in the last two weeks. Now, how does that move us this morning? Yeah. Um, so I think we need to, we're, we're going for reaping, but before there's a reaping, there needs to yeah, be a weeping. Absolutely. And, uh, maybe, they're, maybe they're the things that they were, were weeping for mm-hmm. the, themselves, the church and the lost. But let's... Uh, Let's just take this to God this morning. Uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the, the words from Amanda, of not only from history, but from this Psalm 24. Thank you, Father God, that we are reminded today, Lord, uh, through, Lord, your word, that Jesus is the only one who ascended the hill as Spurgeon put it, with yeah. clean hands and a pure heart. And so when we align our lives with him, when we receive Jesus, then we stand in his righteousness. Mm. So Lord, for all those who are listening today, who are wayward in their lives, who are, who are playing at being a Christian or perhaps not even playing at being a Christian, they are, um, they're off the field. We thank you, Father God, that uh, today's the day you call them back into mm. the game. Yes, Lord, so. you call them back into play. And not because of their own goodness, their own righteousness, not mm-hmm. because, uh, Lord, that they've qualified, um, yes, but because Lord. Jesus has qualified them, called them because of the blood shed on the cross. Mm-hmm. So we pray, Father, that today will be a returning, Lord, for all of us. Father, we pray that our hearts would return to you. And, Lord, that we would stand in the gap of the weeper this morning, Lord, and the intercessor, that we would stand yes, in that Lord. gap and pray, Father, for ourselves for forgiveness and for mercy. We also pray, Father God, for our church, that you put your hand on our church, wherever that may be this morning, whether that is Baptist or Presbyterian or Free Presbyterian or Methodist or Pentecostal, uh, whatever it might be, Father, that you would put your hand on your church this morning and that you would show, um, show your strength, show your power, show your glory. We pray for our leadership in days that are challenging, that you will give them great courage, Father God, and in that great courage, you can also give them great wisdom, Lord. Father, we pray for our communities this morning. We lift up to you, Father, those who are struggling with mental health, those that are struggling with addiction, but more than all of that, Lord, we know that the root of it all is sin, Lord. We know that the root of it, Lord, is when we pursue our own selfish lifestyle, our own selfish thoughts and words and deeds. And so, Lord, we think of a neighbor, we think of a brother, a sister, a family member, we think of a friend, a work colleague, Lord, teach us how to weep for them this morning. Teach us how to be intercessors for our land this morning. Help us to carry, Father, not the burden of uh, sin, but the burden of an intercessor. Lord, to pray, to pray in the Spirit, to intercede 
to stand in the gap on behalf of our nation. Father, we thank you that you have called us, not just Amanda and I, but those who are listening who know you and love you. You have called us the champion today, the kingdom of God, the faith over fear. Mm -hmm. And Father, we choose this day to take the position of a blood-washed Christian, born again, transformed, renewed, spirit-filled, with our eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit would go with us today, that you would go with us into the workplace, with us into the cafes, with us into our community, Lord, as people who are carriers of your kingdom. Mm -hmm. Lord, we lay our burdens down today. Yes, Lord all of our burdens we confess our sins this today lord we confess them before you and we choose this day to be people who pursue the sound of heaven and the sound of revival a weeping and a reaping yeah we pray it in jesus name amen amen come holy spirit yeah come holy spirit Come, Holy Spirit. Mm. You know, when, um, about three years ago, Amanda and I had uh, Jerry Hill over. Mm. But Jerry Hill is the wife of the late Steve Hill, who was influential in the Brownsville revival. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to talk about that tomorrow. Um, but I'm just reminded as, as I was praying there, Jerry came for eight or nine days. Yeah. And Amanda knows this, for the eight or nine days that Jerry was here, I cried every day. At every meeting she took. (laughs) I even cried when she came to the barbecue at our house. (laughs) Because she just carried something, I think, of that. All I can call it is a revival spirit that left you hungry and broken. But at the same time, I I don't know how to put it in the words. No. because you're broken, but it's not like, it's like shame and guilt. It's like, no. it's a brokenness because you just want to be with Jesus. Yeah, I know. Do it again, Lord. Absolutely. Do, Do it, it again. again. Do it again. So, uh, my friend Mark Greenwood said this one time. He said, Mitch, people keep saying, revival's just around a corner. It's a pretty long corner. Because we've been saying it for forever, <laughs> forever, and he said, "I think I don't want it to be around the corner. I want I it to be here." If revival's just around the corner, we need to start moving around it it's instead of waiting for it to come to us. That yeah. we need to start no, moving so around right. that corner. Lord, may this it's be the be day we move just around that corner Absolutely. and see revival in our churches and our land. Amen. Have a good one, guys. Yes, Where we Monday. are, we'll see you tomorrow. Day. Share it with others. God bless. Bye bye. See ya. Bye.